Hey all, it's Kaylin here with Full Purpose and Heart, and today we are going to be looking a little bit more in depth into the interactive notebooks that are created by the publisher Carson DeLosa Education. And these are available online at um, carsondelosa.com, so you can check the description box below for that link. And today I'm gonna to be looking specifically at the Kindergarten Science Notebook. And if so if you have not seen these before or you have interest in them but you're not really sure what they are, this video is just gonna briefly go through what you will get when you purchase this particular um, curriculum book. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, my friends, so let's just go ahead and dive right in. I purchased this book in a set, so I got math, science, and language arts. Um, the things that you need if you're going to do an interactive notebook are um, of course, a notebook. And so let's go through this book here and it'll show you exactly um, kind of what you get when you purchase this material. Um, I think it's kind of fun, but if you look at it, then you'll be able to make your own decision. Now, just as a side note, they do make these for grades kindergarten through fifth grade. So if you have an older student, then you can get um, an age appropriate one. So let's just take a look here at the table of contents and what this particular grade level has. You have several life science topics that you will be covering. Down here are your physical science topics. And they continue up here with push and pull. And then the last section are your earth and space science topics. The last part of the book are a bunch of reproducibles that if you want to make more um, charts or flip books or whatever within your child's interactive notebook, then um, they give you some stuff that you can do there. Okay, um, so the first page here, it's going to give you a good description of what interactive notebooks are if you haven't heard from them before. Here's a little image that you can kind of get an idea. This particular material or this book is going to give you this printable right here, and then this is what your student workbook will resemble when they're finished. So you cut this out and you paste the little pictures that are down here underneath and then color it all and make it pretty. And then on the left side of the book, you have an additional activity, which they, I'll show you in a second, that they should, they tell you how you can do it. Okay, the next page, it'll give you a couple of suggestions of how to get started in your notebook. Depending on the age level of your child will depend on how much um, material or what effort you need to put into in preparing your notebook. Um, but you plan it, you need to cho choose your notebook, and then allow your kid to personalize the cover so that they feel some personal um, ownership, personal ownership to it, and that sort of thing. This is um, just a suggestion. Again, you don't, you're not required to, of course. It gives you some good pros and cons depending on what type of notebook you're going to use. I chose a spiral notebook, and I'll tell you why here when we get that far, but there's a couple of options that you can do. A binder with loose leaf paper being one of the options. Okay, the next page here, it will go into detail about how you can organize your notebook depending, again, on the age of your child. You can you know, do all of them or some of them, it's up to you. And then it gives you some direction about how to format it. Okay, now my student um, is in kindergarten, obviously, and so this is a notebook plan that you can create for your student, but I probably won't use this particular one because my student is only in kindergarten and we're a homeschool environment, so the necessity of planning this much in depth is gonna be done on another page and it, it, I don't need to have this much organization for myself, but it is there in case you choose to have it. Here's another, um, just some suggestions of how you can manage your notebook. It's especially good with younger students. I liked these bullet points that they had about how to integrate a notebook with a younger child, um, depending on the age of your student. And then it gives you some tips about how to create the pages. Um, I don't deal with absences because I'm a homeschool environment, but there you go. And then they also include a rubric if you are a grading, if you're in public school and you grade, or if you're even if you're a homeschooler and you grade your child, there's that option too. Okay. This is the first lesson. Now, um, of course, you don't have to go in any particular order. 
in this particular book. Um, these are just the order that they went in. So um, I kind of scatter around when it, when I planned my year, but I just want to show you how really good it is. You don't um, have to really do a lot of thinking. So in the introduction, it will tell you um, kind of a mini lesson that you can give your student. So this is about the body's five senses and it'll tell you some things that you want to review, some things that you can display. It says display a flower, ask students to use their senses to describe the flower. By the way, it looks, smells, and feels. Have a volunteer explain why you would not need to use your ears or mouth to observe the flower. Then you will create the notebook. And here are the five steps to creating the notebook. They give you a image here of what it will look like when you're finished. And then the reflect on learning is for the left-hand side of the page. And this is a suggestion, it's not required, but I love that it gives you an idea of something that you can do just to um, further practice the point. So it's a very good little blurb. This one particularly says, have students draw five large boxes, label each one, draw a simple object that will require the use of the matching sense. Okay, and then this is your page. This is the page that you will copy and then you can have your student color it as much or as little as you want them to and then they put it in their notebook, okay? So each page is made just like that where they have the three components here, introduction, how to make the notebook, and then the reflect on learning, and then the notebook page is here. And they have lots of great, they're all, um, I like specifically that they're all like different activities. It's not the same activity over and over and over again. So I like that. I'm just gonna kind of quickly thumb through here so that you can see the different kinds of activities that they have based on the different topics that they cover. Again, this is kindergarten curriculum, so it's pretty basic information, but you can um, integrate it into the curriculum that you have chosen for your child depend for every subject that you do, and then do some of them or all of them, that sort of thing, okay? Here's some weather pages and the seasons, what to wear. And then this is your earth science pages. Okay, these pages here are your reproducible pages that you can choose to use or not to use. They have these tabs on the side that they provide if you want to um, further organize your notebook or kind of help your student remember where their last page is. Uh, this is a KWL chart that you can do, you can glue into any the beginning of any section or, you know, whatever. And then they have a bunch of these reproducible pockets that you can copy onto colored paper or onto plain white paper and then include in your books however you would like to do it. And if you're really good with a printer, you could probably get your words printed on there, but depends on how good you are with a printer. But let me just show you, there's a couple of little pockets here that they provide for you. They're kind of fun. Okay, so let me show you accordion folding ones and then the flip book. Okay, so let me show you here how I am using it in my classroom or how I plan to use it. This is, I made this as an example, so it's not done by a kindergartner, but I just made the cover of this little folder and pasted it on the front of this spiral bound notebook. This um, cover is plastic, so it's a little bit more durable than your typical paper one, but it was also a little bit more expensive. Um, they do say that one of the cons of using a spiral bound notebook is that it's not as durable throughout the school year. But being that I'm in a homeschool environment, I don't think that the wear and tear of the notebook will be as much as if it were in just a, a public school classroom. So that's why I decided to stick with this page, the spiral. I also like the size of these pages a lot more. I just, I just like bigger. So I chose to do the spiral instead of the composition book. So um, if this were my child's book, then I would not have colored it. I would have given it to them, and that would have been one of our daily activities is to color the cover of your science notebook and to write your name in there as well, okay? Um, the, this particular one comes with a pocket in the front, which I appreciated and actually was looking for because I want to be able to slip in um, pieces that had been cut up if, 
in the event there's not like if we don't finish it or whatever then we can put loose um, pieces in this pocket and then they'll stay put for a while okay now um, the first page here I left blank I haven't decided the best way that I want to do this but I'll probably just copy or like make a computer printout of what our table of contents will be and then I'll paste it on the front here um, instead of having my student write it just because my student is five um, okay, so this is for an example that I'm going to show you here. We're going to do feathers and fur as an example. This is the copy that I made from the book and I will have this in his work box for the day. So he will pull this out and then I'll have him um, color the pictures here, uh, color these pictures, and then we'll eventually need to cut it all out. Down here I have changed the number from the page number within the book to what page number it will be in our notebook. So you'll see here that I have these pages all numbered. So as we go through the year, he'll be able to find the number page that we're on and put it on the correct number in his notebook, okay? So after we've completed the assignment based on his um, whatever from what's in his work box, then we will open to the correct page. And again, this is just a sample. I did this myself. Um, then we'll open to the page and he will then put the the correct um, whatever pieces where they belong. So here we have animals with fur and these are your animals that have feathers. And then he will fold them up and they actually say one of the things you can recommend is that have your child fold it um, backwards first so that they can see the dotted lines there and then they can turn it around and fold it the other way and have it the correct direction. And it does take a little bit of instruction so that your child can get the folding right, but um, it's not that difficult to, to instruct them on that. Um, this is a section that I actually added myself. I'm going to have this be copy work. Uh, so I've just given a description of what feathers are and what fur is. This will be a part of our instruction before we actually do the notebook or as a part of the notebook, I guess. And so um, it won't be foreign information for him. And then he will do copy work and just copy the sentences that I have written here. So he'll write feathers, outer covering on birds, and then he will write fur, the hair on non-human mammals. So that's the right side of the page that goes with our instruction. And then the left side of the page is um, just continuing education. And so he will make this T chart here and put fur on one side and feathers on the other. And then we'll go through magazines and find pictures of both. And I just did the two here just as an example. Plus the magazines I was using didn't have a lot of feathered animals, but um, in theory we'll put feathered animals on this side and then fur animals on this side and kind of talk about the differences. It will take a little bit of creativity, of course, because, you know, cat hair a lot of times we use cat hair but anyway there's a little cat fur and then do cows have fur I don't know but not really but there were a picture of cows there so I cut it out and put it there so there will take some a little bit of description that'll need to happen with that and just as one other tip that you can use when you're using these interactive notebooks if you have even if you have one student or maybe if you have a couple of students who are doing it to have a little plastic or paper bowl and write the child's name at the bottom of the bowl and I also have written it on the side here so that as they're cutting all of these pieces out and they have all of these random pieces that they can put the pieces in the bowl here and then keep them before they go and paste them in their book that way you know Jack doesn't confuse his with Tommy and Tommy doesn't confuse his with Sarah's and everyone has their pieces put in the bowl there you can just kind of keep it next to the book and they can cut and paste and have it all together. So anyway, these are interactive notebooks. This is the particular science one that is made by Carson DeLosa, and I am currently not affiliated with them in any way. I purchased this with my own money and really am excited to use it with my students this year in our homeschool kindergarten classroom. So if you have any questions, feel free to make a comment on the bottom of this um, video here in the comment section, and I'll be happy to answer it. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, I would encourage you to do so. So you can get other ideas and information about curriculum and homeschool as well as just all things mothering. Okay, have a great day guys.